Hello and welcome to Daily Prelims Practice. Here we are going to take up the MCQs based on today's newspaper of The Hindu and Indian Express, which are important from UPSC Prelims exam perspective. The topics for today's discussion are listed on your screen. So let us start the discussion. The first question of today's discussion is based on this particular news, which has appeared on page number 12 in The Hindu. The context of this news is that Odisha government has decided to enlist the Jagannath temples located in different parts of India and world in order to promote its language, culture and heritage. UPSC has previously asked many questions on Indian temples and their architecture. So this area becomes important for our discussion. In the year 2014, a specific question on temple has been asked and it says, with reference to the cultural history of India, the term Panchayatan refers to, in this question you are provided with four options and you need to identify which of them is correct. And on the similar lines, we have framed one practice MCQ and it says, with reference to Indian temple architecture, consider the following statements. The first statement says, unlike Dravidian temples, Nagara temples were surrounded by high boundary walls. It is an incorrect statement. It is Dravidian temples who were surrounded by high boundary walls and not the Nagara temples and not the Nagara temples. So this statement is incorrect. The second statement says, the presence of water tanks is a unique feature of Dravidian style of temples. It is a correct statement because the presence of water tank inside the temple enclosure was a unique feature of Dravidian style of temples, making this statement correct. The last statement says, the entrance of Dravid temples had sculptures of Dwarpal, whereas images of river goddess were placed at the entrance of Nagra temples. It is also a correct statement because in Dravidian style of temple architecture, the entrance of Garb Greha had sculptures of Dwarpal, Mithun and Yakshas. And on the other hand, the images of river goddesses Ganga and Yamuna were placed outside the Garb Greha at the entrance of Nagra temples. So, this statement is correct. And we are required to identify the correct statements. The correct answer to this question is B, which is 2 and 3 only. As we have discussed context of this particular article, you must have got the idea that this term Panchayatan refers to a style of temple construction. Hence, the answer to this question becomes C. The next question of today's discussion is based on this news, which has appeared on page number 10 in The Hindu. It basically talks about the mudra loans and a senior congress leader has said that the 83% of mudra loans given under the scheme which is known as Pradhan Mantri Mudra Yojana were under 50,000. Although the context of this news is not very important as far as our UPSC prelims exam is concerned. But the flagship schemes are important in UPSC prelims exam so we must be aware about the key aspects associated with this particular scheme. In 2016, UPSC asked about Atal Pension Yojana in which three statements are given and you need to identify the correct statements. You can pause this video and try your hand on this. Now moving on to the practice question which says with reference to PM Mudra Yojana, which of the following statements is or are correct? The first statement says it is a scheme launched for providing loans up to 50 lakh to corporate and small farmer enterprises. It is an incorrect statement as PM Mudra Yojana was launched in 2015 for providing loans up to 10 lakh rupees to non-corporate and non-farm small and micro enterprises. So it is a scheme for non-corporate and non-farm sector, making the statement incorrect. The second statement says only public sector banks are eligible to provide loans under the scheme. It is again an incorrect statement because the eligible beneficiaries can get the loans from public sector banks, private sector banks, cooperative banks, regional rural banks, foreign banks and NBFC. There are multiple institutions which provide loans under the scheme and it is not only the public sector banks. The last statement says there is a 20% subsidy given on the loans by center government. It is again an incorrect statement because there is no subsidy for the loans given under Pradhan Mantri Mudra Yojana. Hence, in this question, all the statements are incorrect and the answer to this question becomes D, which is none of the above. And the answer to the previous year question is C, which is 1 and 3 only. Because in second statement, it says only one member of a family can join the scheme. 
it is not a correct statement because there is no such restriction on the members of one family who can join the scheme and in the first statement the basic objective of the scheme is being mentioned it is a correct statement and if you get to eliminate second you will reach the correct answer so whenever you come across such schemes or such questions just try to apply your common sense and try to eliminate the trap statements it may help you in your prelims exam as it is difficult for anyone to memorize all the provisions of a scheme you need to have a common sensical approach to solve the mcqs moving on to the next question which is based on this particular news which has appeared on page number 1 in the hindu it basically talks about the uttar pradesh urban body elections which are going to be held on 4th and 11th may of this year the local bodies like panchayats and municipalities is an important and recurring theme under upsc prelims exam which makes this topic important for our discussion in 2017 UPSC asked this question local self government can be best explained as exercise in four options are being given in this question you need to identify the correct ones and on the similar lines we have framed one practice mcq which says consider the following domains in this question three domains have been mentioned and the question says which of the above domains lies under the powers of urban local governments in india the first one is urban planning including town planning the second one says slum improvement and upgradation the third one is regulation of slaughter houses and tanneries now if you have gone through the 12th schedule of indian constitution which deals with the subjects under the domain of urban local governments you could have easily solved this question urban planning including the town planning is included in their domain slum improvement and upgradation is also included and the last one is regulation of slaughter houses and tanneries is also one of the domain mentioned under 12th schedule of the indian constitution so all the statements are correct and the answer to this question becomes c which is 1 2 and 3 and the answer to the previous year question is b because the local self government is an exercise of democratic decentralization it was an easy question and you should not go wrong in such questions the next question of today's discussion is based on this particular news which has appeared on page number 1 in the hindu it basically talks about the fifth tiger census which estimated that there are more than 3000 tigers in the country in 2022 and the number of tigers in india has increased by 200 in past 4 years as we all are aware that tiger is an important biodiversity species and upsc has asked many questions in previous year regarding tigers and tiger reserves in 2020 upsc asked that among the following tiger reserves which one has the largest area under critical tiger habitat it was a tricky question but can be solved by common sensical approach and the practice question says that consider the following pairs in which we have given four pairs and their locations and you need to identify how many pairs given above is or are correctly matched this question has been framed in a similar manner like the way upsc has asked questions in the year 2022 because in such questions it is very difficult to eliminate the options and reach the correct answer you need to have an accurate idea regarding the options the first one is ranipur tiger reserve and the location which is mentioned is uttar pradesh is a correct one so this pair is matched correctly the second one is bhadra tiger reserve and it is being matched to maharashtra it is an incorrect pair bhadra tiger reserve is located in the state of karnataka and not in maharashtra making this pair incorrect the third one is indravati tiger reserve and the state which is mentioned here is madhya pradesh it is again an incorrect pair because the indravati tiger reserve is located in the state of chatisgarh and not in madhya pradesh and the last one is bandipur tiger reserve many of you must have heard the name of this tiger reserve and it is located in karnataka so this pair is matched correctly and the answer to this question becomes b as only two pairs have matched correctly and the answer to the previous year question is c which is nagarjun sri salem tiger reserve it is difficult for anyone to keep a tap on such kind of informations like which tiger reserve has the largest area under critical tiger habitat but there is one catch in this question if you have any idea that nagarjun sri salem is the largest tiger reserve in india you could have guessed it can be the tiger reserve which has the largest area under critical tiger habitat so it can be one of the way to approach such questions the next question of today's discussion is based on this news which has appeared on page number 15 in indian express it basically talks about the outflow 
of foreign investments from Indian share market and it is happening due to the aggressive rate hikes by central banks globally. As UPSC has asked many questions on foreign direct investment and foreign portfolio investment, this area becomes important for our discussion. In 2020, UPSC has asked a question on foreign direct investment in which you are required to identify the major characteristic of FDI. It was a tricky question but you can try a hand on this. And on the similar lines, we have framed one practice MCQ and it says, consider the following statements with respect to foreign portfolio investment which is also known as FPI and foreign direct investment which is known as FDI. Two statements are being given and you need to identify the correct statements. Unlike FPI, FDI investors have no control over ventures or direct ownership of property or stake in a company. It is an incorrect statement because it is under foreign portfolio investment the ownership is passive and investors have no control over the ventures or direct ownership of property in a company. In this statement, FPI and FDI are interchanged. UPSC also frames such trap statements so you should be careful while solving such MCQs. The second one is, FDI is more liquid than FPI and offers the investor a chance for a quicker return on his money. It is again an incorrect option because FPI is more liquid than FDI and in FDI the investor's money is tied up in a company and they face less liquidity and bears more risk on their investments. Hence both the statements are incorrect, the answer to this question becomes D which is neither one nor two. And the answer to the previous year question is B, as FDI is largely a non-debt creating capital flow. The last question of today's discussion is based on this news which has appeared on page number 13 in Indian Express. It basically talks about the LIGO India, which is Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, which is famously known as LIGO. And the LIGO India will be the Indian node in the global network of labs to detect and study gravitational waves. Scientific interventions and studies are important and recurring theme in UPSC prelims exam which makes this area important for today's discussion. In 2019, UPSC asked that recently scientists observed the merger of giant black holes billions of light years away from earth. What is the significance of this observation? In this question, you are being given four options and you need to identify the correct one. The practice MCQ on LIGO which we have framed says that what are the advantages of using LIGO for the study of gravitational waves? The first one is, it provides a direct measurement of gravitational waves. It is a correct statement because LIGO provides the direct measurement of gravitational waves allowing scientists to study the property of these waves. The second one is, it allows us to study the properties of black holes and neutron stars. It is again a correct statement because LIGO helps scientists to observe and study the merger of black holes and neutron stars providing valuable insights into their properties, making this statement correct. The third statement says it can detect gravitational waves from sources millions of light years away. It is again a correct statement. LIGO is able to detect the gravitational waves from millions of light years away and it allows us to observe the phenomena that otherwise would be impossible to study. It is again one of the advantage of LIGO. The fourth one is, it is used to study the origins of universe. It is a tricky statement and you should be aware that LIGO is not specifically designed to study the origins of universe. However, it can provide the valuable insights into the early universe, but it is not designed to study the origin of universe, making the statement incorrect. The last statement says, it helps to advance our understanding of fundamental physics. It is also a correct statement because LIGO provides into the properties of gravitational waves which helps in advancing our understanding of fundamental physics. So it is a correct option. And the answer to this question becomes C because all the statements are correct except fourth. And the answer to the previous question is B. So that's all for today's discussion. Thank you for watching today's DPP. Stay tuned for upcoming sessions which will enhance your preparation for the prelims exam which is going to be conducted on 28 May 2023.